Rub up your engines! Now here's a problem with Toyota Camrys. Davis Baker says, Hey Scotty, here's a Camry design flaw you need to tell people about. I got a 2020 Camry. The other day my battery died. No problem, I had a quality jump starter in the trunk. Unfortunately, my trunk release is electric only. The trunk has no key lock and Toyota removed the seat back releases of the car's interior. With a dead battery, there's no way to access the trunk to get any equipment to jump start the car. Well, that means you have to have your emergency backpack in your back seat where people will see it and steal it. Now, why don't they just have an emergency to get into the trunk. Oh, I agree. I'm all against this electronic crap. Electric parking brakes, right? Hmm. If you don't have any electricity, guess what? The electric parking brake won't work. You either pull it up with your hand or an American car's alarm you stepped on on the floor. That makes a lot more sense than having electronic parking brakes. In this case, an electronic trunk. Another stupid idea. Back in the day, hey, my 94 Celica has a back trunk and you open it from the inside but it's a cable <laughs> and it still works. If it was electric, who knows it would be working anymore. <laughs> this electronic fantasy world where everything is electric doesn't work when things start to break. You can't get in if it's all electric and there's no bypass. I don't know why they took the bypass. You used to have one inside you could pull, but he said his doesn't have one. Hey, please leave the bypasses in. When you put in electronic stuff, let's have a backup, please. At least I have to say, as far as I've seen, all the cars I work on, at least they don't have electronic uh, openers for the hood. There's still a cable that pops it and you can get inside. Otherwise, you couldn't jumpstart the car at all, even if you had cables and stuff in your hand. Right? At least they haven't gone to electronic trunk locks for the front hood yet. Well, here's yet another reason not to buy an electric vehicle. The Rivian 1T, the electric pickup truck owners, are finding out that their vehicles are draining electricity just sitting there. Even your regular gasoline car will drain some electricity from your battery, running computer systems, your anti-theft systems and stuff. So a modern car, you can't just let it sit for like a month or two or three because it'll just start draining the battery and it might not start up. One guy who called himself overzealous who owns an R1T said he was losing 4% of his charge a day just sitting there. He blames it on the recent update because he he said it used to be like 1.8%. Now it's 4% a day. It's draining out, just sitting there. Now you got enough problem. There's not enough power to begin with, and they have a limited range. Then it's sucking it up while it's sitting there. Now, realize one thing. These batteries, they have liquid electrolytes in them, right? If they freeze, the battery will break. So the batteries have to heat themselves up so they don't freeze. Well, guess what? When it's really cold outside, it's going to use a lot of energy heating itself up. And eventually, it won't have any left to drive around it. Even when you recharge them, they have to be heated up before you recharge them. If they're almost out of power and you plug them in, they won't charge. First, they got to heat up the battery. And I was reading one guy, he was on a trip. It took an hour before it would even start charging because it had to heat up his battery first when he was plugged into the charger. Now you're finding out they just sit there and drain. Sitting, of course, in the winter, they're going to drain even more because it's cold outside and it's got to heat itself up so the electrolyte doesn't freeze. Now, of course, they are not even sure what the heck going on. Some of them are saying, well, if your key fob's too close to the car, it's in your garage, you're in the house, uh, you might think it's waking itself up, so it starts using electricity, blah, blah, blah. The only real fact is the things are sitting there draining electricity while you're not using it. It'd be like having a car that's sitting, running by itself, using up gasoline, you're not going anywhere. Well, in this case, it's using up electricity. Yet another reason not to buy an electric car, it would just sit there and drain away while you're not even using the stupid thing. And then they say things like, well, Leave it in the heated garage. Do this. A lot of people don't have heated garages. A lot of people live in apartments, townhomes, condos, whatever. Electric car out in the elements. Stupid idea. Especially if you live somewhere where it's cold. Well, if you saw these pictures, hey, a Tesla is going to a ferry in British Columbia. It smashes into the ramp and it breaks in half. <laughs> now, luckily, no one was injured. They were going at a slow speed, right? The driver says it just suddenly accelerated and ran into the ramp. Now they're all trying to cover their rear ends. And you know? the British Columbia police said, "Why well, not do it?" alcohol. They tested them. All they know is that there's a Tesla and it accelerated rapidly, ran into a ramp and it broke in half. Now they're lucky it didn't break in half and go in the ocean. That would have been all over for them. The police said, well, it looks like they're trying to get into a ferry and it's accelerated, ran into it and broke it in half. Like I say, it's a good thing it didn't fly into the ocean. It'd be all over for these people. And the interesting thing was there wasn't a vessel at the gate. There was no ferry. The gate was closed and there was no ferry. So it just decided, ran right into the 
gate. Who knows? I can't see people being that dumb. You're not going to miss a ferry, right? But the self-driving stuff, hey, who knows what it sees and what it decides to do? Who knows what the computer sees, right? A human's obviously going to see, well, the gate's closed. There's no ferry there, so I'm not going to drive into it. Well, for some reason, it ran into it and broke in half. Now, there's been more than 200 incidents with these Tesla smashing into things. <laughs> And of course, Tesla always blames on it. Oh, it's the drivers. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. It seems more than a coincidence. These things are always running into things. When do you see other cars running into things by themselves? You, know? you don't really see it. And breaking in half kind of shows the poor quality of manufacturing, too. It's just sitting there on a little road that can't go all that fast and it broke in half. It's like, talk about cheap construction. <laughs> C.D. Baird says, do I need a brake fluid change? I took my two and a half year old Camry to the dealer for 18,000 mile checkup. The dealer recommended I have the brake fluid changed. I never heard of this. Are they trying to hose me? Well, yes, they are trying to hose you as the Canadians would say. Yeah, you need to flush your brake fluid once in a while. Maybe once every six or seven years. <laughs> and even that, I mean, I've never flushed the brakes on my 94 Celica and they still work perfectly fine. It's a preventative measure. Now, if you you do have a car that has ABS brakes, my Celica does. The analog brake module is all computerized. Gunk could get it and screw it up. So if you have ABS, eh, you know, maybe every five, six, seven years or something, you could flush the system out. Brake fluid lasts a really long time. You got a two and a half year old car with 18,000 miles. They're just trying to rip you off. There's nothing wrong with your fluid. And if you really want to know and you don't think, you can go out and you can go online and you can buy brake fluid test strips. The test strips. You stick them in the brake fluid and it tells you what kind of shape the fluids in it'll say good fair or change and then if it's time to change you can change the fluid and those test kits cost like 15 bucks or something you can do it yourself or if you don't want to have a mechanic do it for you but if you don't have any mechanics you trust and they want to sell you stuff do it yourself <laughs> that's why i'm here to help people out you know there's a lot of stuff you can do it yourself even if you're not going to do the work learn how to test it so you say oh nope i don't need that because if you go into most mechanics and say do i need this they're going to say yes i mean imagine going to a shoe store and say do i really need these new shoes oh yeah you look great buddy you look great the salesman's gonna try to sell you shoes right well people at mechanic shops are gonna try to sell you jobs so if you can learn how to do stuff yourself you can save yourself an awful lot of money bill grayson says scotty i have a toyota it was so boring i fell asleep at the wheel <laughs> all right come on now so i gotta laugh at it it is funny right now really says toyotas are so boring they're boring because they always start run get you where you're going to get good gas miles right i'll give you a perfect example back in the day when camrys were the biggest selling car in the united states yeah a lot of them were kind of ugly right boring ugly plain but it get you where you're going you look at a modern toyota they're sharp looking cars you get a trd it's zippy fun to drive around right i don't know what people think boring is these days but reliability and they make them good looking I mean, come on, people, let's face the facts. All cars look the same today. I was driving around the road the other day with my wife, and I said, look, you can't tell that Mercedes from the Mazda, from the Toyota to the Ford. It's just sheet metal or sheet aluminum metal. You can make any shape you want. It's not hard to do. They all pretty much look the same. And it's just which ones are going to last longer than the others, you know? You see some of these Kias, they look really good, but they don't hold up over time. And now since they all kind of look the same, what the heck? Buy something like a Toyota Honda that's going to last. And they're as boring looking as they used to be. That's for sure. Jerome says my stereo cuts out on my 03 Infinity. I thought it was amp nut, but it wasn't. I tried other amps that didn't fix it. What do you think about replacing the whole head unit? Those things cost a fortune. I personally would just forget the whole thing. I'd put an Android system in. You can get an Android. You already bought another amp, right? And that didn't fix your problem. So use the new amp you got and hook it up to an Android system. It's an 03. It's a 20-year-old Infinity. That's an old car. You don't want to be messing with those super expensive Infinity head units. Get an Android and put it in. The Androids work fine. Actually, some of them, that's an 03. An Android would blow that 03 away. The 03 is old technology. It's 20 years old. Get a new Android and they aren't all that expensive. But you can get real fancy ones if you want to spend more, but they will blow away that original equipment thing. And let's face it, it's a 20-year-old Infinity. It's not like it's some kind of collector's item or something, and you want to keep it stock, get an Android. Put the Android in it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.